Hello everyone, my name is Deeksha Jain and I have secured the 22nd rank in Civil Services Examination 2018. In this video, I will be talking about poverty. So first let us talk about what is poverty. It has been defined as a socio-economic condition uh, in which a certain section of society is not able to meet the basic requirements in life. This is an older understanding of poverty and it is not a very inclusive understanding. How we define poverty today is that it does mean the inability of the section of the society, inability to meet the day-to-day -day needs and requirements of life. But in a broader sense, poverty is not just that. It is not just the lack of material resources or income, but it is also about the non-material conditions. It is about multiple deprivations uh, with respect to economic deprivation, social deprivation, inability to take, make certain choices, lack of freedoms in lives. And... Uh, it is a condition when a person isn't able to make choices with respect to important matters in his or her own life. It also has a psychological aspect. This uh, idea of poverty was basically developed by Amartya Sen in his capabilities approach, where he said that poverty is not just about economic poverty, but it is much more than that. It is multidimensional and it causes deprivations. It would include things like lack of access to water, lack of access to electricity, lack of access to education. So it is not just about having less money or having not being able to eat. It is much more than that and much more expansive than that. And taking from this, the United Nations Development Program has also developed the multidimensional poverty index as opposed to the earlier index, which was not this multidimensional, which uh, focused in a much narrower form. So in India, we had uh, various committees, Suresh Tandulkar committee, which uh, drew the poverty line and uh, it said that uh, I think 37% of India was under poverty line. Then the Rangarajan committee came in later and it also came up with its own evaluation of poverty. And uh, it said that 29.9% of people were below the poverty line in 2015. But the a basic framework with which to just draw a homogenized and uniform line has been absent. At the same time, uh, the last from the Rangarajan Committee report is considered to be drawing from this. The United Nations Development Program has also come up with the multidimensional poverty index, which is not just about in, uh, economic poverty, but includes indicators of health, education, standard of living, assets owned, etc. So, uh, the idea and conception of poverty has become very wide and much more broad over the years as more and more research has gone into it. In India, we had the poverty line uh, by Suresh Tendulkar and uh, according to it, 37% of people were under the poverty line. Then we had the Rangarajan committee, which also came up with its own uh, conception of poverty and um, so on and so forth. Poverty is a problem that India is facing uh, to this day, although we have combated it a lot uh, ever since independence as well. So let us now delve into the causes of poverty. Uh, first is economic causes. Uh, backward agriculture. In India, uh, agriculture is more labor intensive and less productive because of which the income of the uh, Indian farmer is very less and many of the uh, rural Indian farmers are under poverty. B. Slow process of industrialization and urbanization. The industries, uh, manufacturing especially, has not caught up the primary and secondary industries uh, in India. Uh, so that has also led to that has not led to the same rise in wages which was for example experience in industrial revolution in European countries. But there has also been increasing economic inequality and that has also uh, furthered uh, poverty. Lack of sufficient institutional support system in terms of credit facility, land reforms issues or uh, financial inclusion and uh, many the institutional support of health and education also. So this has also deepened poverty in India. Unemployment and indebtedness are also very high among the Indian poor and they have all further put them into the trap of poverty. Second would be social causes. Within social causes, caste system is also an important factor. Uh, many of the poor uh, in India are also belong to the lower caste because both factors uh, enforce each other. Moving on to social causes, a uh, caste system is uh, one major factor that has affected. Uh, the caste system deprives people of land, education, discourages labor mobility and furthers poverty of those belonging to the lower caste. Apart from that, prevalence of corruption, 
poor level of education and skill development and even superstitions have contributed as social factors to poverty there are also individual uh, factors like high alcoholism gambling poor status of health and education poor sense of motivation of achievement so all these individual factors depression among farmers etc also further poverty in india there are also many consequences uh, i would say many evil consequences of poverty which uh, basically functions as a cycle which creates other uh, harmful cycles poverty leads to high population growth poor quality of human resource bonded labor child labor nationalism mal governance it is a threat to ecology it increases law and order problems because of increasing frustration among the population it leads to increasing crime and delinquent uh, behavior and poverty furthers poverty once the culture of poverty is uh, it the vicious cycle of poverty as we say uh, once poverty leads to so many uh, of these bad things and they further uh, poverty so it is very difficult to break out of this vicious cycle so uh, now we will be talking about certain measures that can be taken or are being taken to combat poverty in india the short term measures like food security through the pds system wage employment as is being done under the narega scheme universal basic income can also be tried to especially for the ones who are uh, deeply marginalized and facing imminent danger because of poverty another suggestion is that the minimum wages act should be applied to the unorganized sector informal sector as well because so many types of employment are excluded out of the wages act many people don't even get the minimum wage and there is no law to enforce that they can get minimum wages so this is also something that needs to be done and the economic survey also talks about this medium term objectives are uh, promotion of self employment control of corruption very important is capability building through education and skills development if you give a person money that person can eat once but if you skill that person and if you provide education to a person it is a way of ensuring that the person can earn his or her own livelihood and can uh, basically widen the choices that he or she has so this is one of the most important factors which helps in curbing poverty long term measures to curb poverty would be ending psychological deprivation population control is very important industrialization and urbanization have to be promoted in a planned manner so that without harming the people they are able to improve the wages of people basically improve wages of people improve their income provide education to them there needs to be specialized focus on backward areas which are specifically suffering the aspirational districts program is very relevant here because it focuses on 200 most backward districts in india and they are located in any state so these districts are given focused attention so that they can combat poverty in a very focused manner then there also needs to be proper work on controlling natural calamities and there needs to be effective disaster management whenever a disaster strikes a flood comes a drought hits or a cyclone comes the most affected are the absolutely marginalized and the poor they don't have proper houses their houses are washed away they hardly have any belongings and uh, hunger and starvation so these are the people who suffer the most in disasters so there needs to be proper disaster management and rehabilitation for them as well some important schemes for poverty eradication in india are mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act nulm that is national rural livelihood mission national urban livelihood mission what we really need is to move from a vicious circle of poverty to a virtuous circle whereby positive enforcements of education health even economic assistance we are able to get people out of that vicious circle and as a country we can move forward on the path of development so that will be all for poverty thank you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to get latest updates on upcoming videos